If you guys have been tuning in in weeks past, you may notice the set looks a little bit different. I'm in my new studio kitchen downstairs, and I want to give a special thank you to Seven Tide and the design team at the Kohler Signature Store, and most importantly, my general contractor and finished carpenter who happens to be um, quarantining with me, my husband, who's been managing a full-time job and also putting this together for us. And honey, thank you, I love you, and I promise to cook you really good food. Um, if you guys are joining the Chef's Pantry for the first time this week, welcome. You're in for a real treat. We're a live cooking show, anything can happen, so just bear with us, enjoy the ride. And this is your chance to cook side-by-side side, top culinary talent from around the world. It's meant to be super interactive. Send us your questions, have a laugh, engage with the chefs. Use this as a time to just enjoy the show, but also hone your skills. Um, we're here for you and food brings people together, so let's have a blast. And you guys have been sending in what you've been making and it is awesome check out these pictures last week we cooked with jen royal from table we had um, a daughter and grandmother whip up gnocchi from w chippy um they look delicious they say they're never going back to potatoes they were ricotta gnocchi and amazing um the week before we made the most unbelievable chocolate cake with sarah wallace a food network star how good does that look and then we have Fans coming back week after week. This is Brian up in P-Town. Hey, Brian, it's good to see you back. I know you're watching tonight. You look good out there. And tonight, it's a big night. And so here's the thing. In Boston, we're lucky. We've got great schools. We have the best sports teams. And we have the Wahlbergs. Uh, not only can they dance, sing, and act, but by God, they can cook, most importantly. And tonight, we have the top dog himself, Chef. Paul Wahlberg, are you there? How are you? Yes, great. I'm well, thank you. Great to see you in the fridges at Alma Nove. How are you? Good. You know, things are good. You know, we're plugging along, obviously, with the uh, with the lockdown in place. It gets a little bit difficult, but we're making it work. Sure, and you've been busy in the kitchen. I know when we were in preschool and our chefs running around with their masks, you guys are busy still cooking. What's going on right now at on the movie and Robert? So right now, our big thing is, you know, we're open for takeout and for um, takeout and curbside delivery and third party delivery, but we're also taking this advantage to really trying to work with the community. And so we've had great groups like Crescent Capital, Frontline, 
uh, and places like that who have stepped up and they're actually purchasing meals through the restaurants to be delivered to all the frontline um, responders, uh, nurses, doctors, uh, ambulance, EMTs, police, fire, you name it, we're trying to get out there. We're also helping as many families as we can as well. So we're trying to keep busy with that. That's so fantastic. It must make you feel really good to be a part of such important effort. It's been great. Everybody's really stepped up and, and you know, helping the restaurants and helping the community has been great. We saw your restaurants are all across the country with wall burgers. We saw your brother with Mario Lopez making a big donation. That was a happy moment, a feel good moment for your family. Yeah, I'm, yeah, he he marks out there like every day, really trying to help, you know, help people. And he's been great doing it. And, you know, that, that whole situation in LA was just amazing. You know, Mark gets all the, he's, he's more glamorous than I. So. <laughs> Well, I don't know. You you certainly bring on the glamour. I remember when we cooked last it was a couple of years ago now. I, I had never worn to the fashionable sex coat. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what did you say? About sorry, you are now, Paul, you were were in your professional kitchen at Alma Nove. Alma yep. Nove is one of the most beloved restaurants that we have in Boston, certainly in the shipyard in Hingham. And it's really, um, it started with your mother. Tell us a little bit about the provenance of this restaurant. So um, the, the restaurant is named after my mom. It's uh, her name is Alma and uh, Nove is Italian for nine for her nine children. So it's really, it, it's, it, it's a homage to my mom and to really, you know, the influence she had on us growing up and, and with cooking. Yeah, that's, that's a beauty. She must be so proud. I wonder though, one of nine, have you thought about who you're most grateful not to be quarantined with during this time? I, I could not, if, if you locked all of us up in one house when we were kids, there would be, there would, it would not be pretty. <laughs> it would not be pretty. So I, I, I I count my blessings that everyone's safe and everyone's good, but the idea of all of us being cooped up together like that is just beyond imagination. Anyway, you guys certainly know how to break some stones. Colton's saying all the wall burgers are cool, but Chef Paul is really the goat. I like that, Colton. Yeah, we're, we're super fans of yours, as you see, for sure. So we're making with you tonight one of the dishes that I think you're coming in uh, all the time. What is it? So what we're going to make tonight, uh, typically I make it with the gnocchis, which are homemade gnocchis that we make in the restaurant. But for ease of execution, we're going to do uh, rigatoni, uh, which works out very well. And it's a good shape for the pasta because it's going to pull in a lot of sauce and you'll get a lot of different flavors as you're, as you're biting into each piece. And so this is one of our, this was on our original menu and it's been one of our favorite dishes. So it's with wild mushrooms, Madeira, and spinach with a little bit of white truffle oil, which I'm a firm believer truffles make everything better. They do. Oh my goodness. There, it's, I always get excited come November when we roll into the fresh truffle season, but how great that we can get it and infuse olive oils. You did such a great job spelling out all the layers of the dish. So for anybody at home that wants to really dive deep, you can start by making the stock um, spend a little extra time, like an hour or two, and let those things simmer. Um, spin us through the mise en place because I know you you sort of laid it out so we can take it in stages. Yeah, and the good thing about this is everything that we're doing on a dish like this can be made at different times. Great. It's not one of those things where you have to attack it all at once. You can saute the mushrooms. They'll hold for a couple of days. Once you get the mushrooms cut and clean, then you can turn around and you can get all of your pieces for um for your stock which will come naturally from the mushrooms and then uh the pasta you can cook and it, it, it you can chill it down and let that sit and so it really works out it's one of those dishes that you can make on the fly for yourself as long as all of your supplies are done that's great and i love dishes that have room for versatility so anyway, here we are with my new fun class um i had a uh, purchase a stock tonight uh, pantry staple. So I have that on a low simmer. Um, but then basically I've put together like a mirepoix 
um, that would go into the stock. Maybe you can walk us through how you build those great flavors from the base. Absolutely. And like all really good dishes, everything's built on layers of flavors. Yeah. And so what we want to do now is start really with kind of the fundamentals of the flavor, which is the stock. And so the first thing I, you want to start with is when you grab your mushrooms, you want to get your portobello mushrooms, which are always great, and you can scrape out the gills. Okay. You take the stems off, you shred the stems, and use that for your stock. So you, 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 you're going to get to utilize every piece of the ingredients, which is really great. So once I've gotten all my, all my mushroom straps together, and you can also use dried mushrooms. So if you have a few odds and ends of dried porcini, dried shiitakes, anything like that, it can all go into the mushroom stock. So once we get started, so I've got my mushroom trimmings. They're going to go into my, my container. You can see my stems and everything all shredded. I've got my mirepoix vegetables, which are carrot, celery, and onions. They'll go on top. And then you just add your water. You want to get pretty close to the top. You want to bring that to bring it to a light simmer. And then you just want to let it sit for an hour, hour and a half. And it's going to give you all those good flavors, and it's going to pull out all of the, the richness in. It's going to pull out all of the richness in the uh, in the mushrooms. And you're going to get that real earthy flavor. The carrots will add sweetness. The onions will add sweetness, and it'll help to give a little bit of depth to your stock. Great. I like when you're not just putting mushroom on top. You're building that ultimate mushroom flavor on a cellular level from the base. With, with the water that's going to suck up through the pasta. But can you use a chicken stock or a beef stock or a vegetable stock as an alternative? Oh, absolutely. You can. And the great thing is, like, and this is one of those dishes where, you know, we have our recipe that we follow to the letter every single time. It's because what the customers are used to. But what's great about cooking at home and being a home cook is you can make it, you make what you like. So yeah. if you don't have mushroom stock or, or vegetable stock, you can always use a chicken stock. If you have a nice chicken stock that you prefer, um, if even the packaged chicken stock, which would be a low sodium, works really, really well with this. You can use a nice beef stock if you have stuff, whatever you like. That's what's great about food and about cooking. You know, you're going to try to duplicate what we're doing here, but at the same time, you can make it exactly the way that you like. Nice. Emily says, absolutely love it. And Maggie, I agree. I need more dishes at home too. I can make on the fly. Thanks for sharing. This is great. I love that you can use what you have and it'll be delicious. Okay. So, so this is where you're really going to start the core flavor base. Let that go kind of a set it and forget it for the yep. stock. Absolutely. So once, like I said, that can go on once you start doing your prep and really kind of building your layers as you're going. So it's one of those things that in the morning, you can get your mushrooms together, get them clean. You can make the stock, strain it. You can freeze the stock. Yeah. And keep it in. You you can. Some people will freeze it in ice cube trays, and literally take them out as ice cubes and take them as they need them. You can do that with chicken stock. You can do it with all kinds of different stocks. So it really gives you that added boost of flavor, and also helps you utilize any of the scraps that you have. So if you I'm a big rotisserie chicken guy, so I always save the carcasses, and I'll take those carcasses and make stock, and then I'll cook the stock down a little bit and throw that in the freezer, and then I'll always have fresh stock around. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And you see and watch see it fire up the pan, and Emily's saying thank you to the whole Walmart family for what you're doing to help the front line in this horrible time. It's really setting such a great drumbeat and precedent for how we can give back. I agree. So, Paul, do we fire up the mushrooms? We've got the stock going. Whether or not you're using some some nor bouillon cube oh, or making it from scratch, that's on. And then, talk to me about the mushrooms that you chose for the budget. I'm sorry. Can you? I, I, tell us about what mushrooms you chose for the dish, and let's set them back there. So the mushrooms. Obviously, you want to use what's what we're trying to do here is something that's going to be readily available. Obviously, the great seasonal mushrooms right now coming yeah. into the spring morels are just like at their peak. And so I found some hint of the woods. What fun is that? To seeing what's out there, 
But what we're going to use today is we're going to use the porta balance of Carminis, and you can use and um, we've got some oyster mushrooms. You can use shiitake mushrooms, whatever's available. Because what's really good is once you kind of cook it all down and you make your stock, those flavors will really meld themselves together. Great. And then once you finish it with the truffle oil, it, it's just such a great flavor. So as you saw, we break the gills out of the portobello. So then you just dice them. And they're going to go into a pot. So there's all my, so I have all my mushrooms cut. And the big thing is when you're going through all of this is you want to have everything kind of ready yeah. when you start cooking. Because once you get, get into the stages, it really makes a difference. So I got a nice hot pan, get some oil in there, and then I'll just start adding my mushrooms. Uh, and the thing I like about the medley is that you're going to get a lot of different textures. Yeah, the mushrooms, and especially the variety of mushrooms, they're going to have different textures in them, and that's really great. And they have such great flavor as well. Oh, yeah, Russ, I got my bit of the woods and my weekly uh, vegetable delivery from Misfit Market. I was so excited. I love the juiciness of it. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So mine, I have some portobello, I have some cremini, I have shiitake, I have hen of the woods. So lots of different shapes, sizes. They're going to cook at different times, give it some nice texture variety. So, and, and that's the thing, because the textures, the flavors, everything. And, and being able to use what's around, what's fresh, what's seasonal is what's great about about this kind of a dish because there's lots of different things that you can do with it. Like I said, if you got if you had dry porcinis, it's a great flavor to add. Yeah. You, have, you can get fresh morels when they're available, dry morels, things like that. And you can really build on the different flavors. So while we're doing this, I'm also, because we're doing this together, I've got my pot of water on. I've got eight ounces of rigatoni. This is going to be for two people. So okay. I've got eight ounces of really good bronze dye imported rigatoni because you want that really good. You want that really good flavor. Oh, just, nice salted water. And I, I didn't have rigatoni, but I had this buziate from Italy that has like a a really good um, semolina base that I thought would hang on to the mushroom sauce. No, absolutely. And you, and like I said, it's all about the quality of the ingredients that you use with any of it. And so using a really nice semolina pasta, that just, it, it really makes a difference. It really makes a difference to what you're trying to do. So I think I might know the answer to this, but Michelle's asking, if mushrooms aren't your thing, what would you recommend? I feel like this is not your dish. This is like mushroom on mushroom on mushroom on mushroom. I'm, I'm sorry? If mushrooms aren't your thing, what would you recommend? You can, to build different flavors, you can, you can always use, it's again, what you like. If you like, so if you want to do something a little bit different, this would be a great dish with pesto. You know, you just have to kind of work the ingredients differently. Like, I would not use the Madeira with the pesto. But if you wanted to, if you didn't want to do mushrooms, eggplant is always tasty. Eggplant, simple caramelized onions with some slivered garlic is fantastic. Because once you get that Madeira in there, you get that sweetness. And then just hit it with a little bit of vegetable stock and a little bit of fresh herb. It's a great variation on the dish. That sounds fantastic. So take, if you take grape tomatoes, Cut them in half, oil, salt, pepper, put them on a rack, bake them in the oven, just oven dry them. And they're these great, beautiful nuggets of sweet tomato flavor. So you can do something like that and add just, you can just add a little bit of white wine and garlic to that and finish it with fresh basil. That sounds so, fantastic. However, if you are a mushroom lover, this is your dish. It's a great dish for mushroom lovers, but you can also work many different ways to do it for people who are not mushroom fans. Great. Okay, so I'm going to start. I'm going to a nice color and texture on my mushrooms. They're getting nice yeah, and you want to, as, as mushrooms cook down, you want to evaporate all the liquid out of there. What that does is it intensifies all of the flavor. Great. Right, so you want to bring all of that flavor right up as, and get it as reduced down as, as you possibly can. You're going to get a nice color on it. You're going to get a nice caramelized color and the, the 
sugars, any any of the starches in there will start to caramelize on the exterior of the mushroom, and that's the sweetness. Oh, it smells good. Mm. I just love the earthiness of the mushrooms. It's just it's just a such a distinct flavor that it pulls me in. So as the mushrooms start to cook down a little bit, I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. Great. And I want to just, that salt is going to help draw out a little bit more of the liquid. Okay. So I'm basically going to start the dish now because the mushrooms are close. The pasta, I've got the pasta cooking and now I can start, I'm going to start the dish itself and you'll be amazed how simple it is. So okay. I take a little bit of oil. You want a you want a canola oil or something to start with because you don't you want to keep that low smoke point. Say the introverts is the for a salad or something. Get a little bit of garlic in there. Oh, okay. Now you can take some of your mushrooms. And the, the great thing is, is on this recipe, you're going to have extra mushrooms left over, and you can hold on to those mushrooms and use them for something else. Okay. So you're going to smell that garlic kind of toasting a little bit in it, and you want to kind of get those flavors going. So any recommendations for keto as a pasta alternative? I'm, I'm sorry? Any recommendations for pasta alternatives, low-carb options? You do, like, a, if you don't want to do pasta, you can do, um, you can do some different things. You can do, obviously, like a cauliflower. You can do vegetable, you know, a total vegetable base. Um, Chickpeas are great with it. I really Ooh. like chickpeas and mushrooms together, especially with the garlic. I'm going to add the Madeira wine now. I mean, because you have oil, oil mushrooms, Madeira? It's going to flame up because of the alcohol level of the Madeira. Okay. Ooh, like I said, on the mushrooms, whatever's left over, you can just hold on to those mushrooms and use them for something else, which is great. And what about Madeira substitutes? Is there any substitute? Could you use the port? Um, Could you, you use, use the port? Have a slightly different flavor, yeah. and it's going to add. It's going to come out a little bit sweeter. But you can definitely use a pork. You can use masala if you can't find Madeira. Great. You know, Madeira is just that, for me, it's one of those wines of choice when it comes to, to making a dish like this. Great. You can absolutely, and if you choose not to, if you just really want to work on layering the vegetable flavors, you can add a bunch of fresh herbs, say some thyme and rosemary to it, and help build that if you don't want to add the alcohol to it. Nice. So as you can see, we're bringing this down. We're going to cook, we're going to evaporate almost all of the alcohol to make sure we want to get to that point where all we get is the, the sweetness and the flavor out of it. Ooh, have, you like your, you have you put your butter in? Past, and they taste a little whiny. It's because they haven't cooked it all the way down to really kind of cook the whininess out and really give you that wine flavor. It's, and that's what we really look for in dishes like this. Great. And now, have you, what is in the pan so far? I still have uh, butter that needs to go in. Have you Have you added your butter yet? Have you added your butter yet? As soon as this comes down, yeah. uh, as soon as the Madeira comes down, we're going to add the mushroom stock, and we're okay. going to start to reduce that down to intensify that flavor. So that's, like I said, it's one more layer of flavor that we're going to add. And then once we get to that point, once we reduce that down enough, then we'll swirl in the butter. Great. Your sauce is just about done. Great. Yeah. So now I'm adding the mushroom stock. Like I said, you want to just, you're going to reduce it probably by about half. So when you look at it, you see, you know, the mushrooms are floating a little bit right now. But what you'll see is they're, they're, you'll see less liquid in there. And that's just going to go, and you can keep it on a nice high rolling boil because that's what's really, when you evaporate the liquid, that's what intensifies the flavors. It seems like this so is a dish where you really want to control your salinity too with all the reduction. So go easy on the salt at every stage. I wait on the salt till the end because if you start adding salt very early, what happens is by the time you get there, 
you may have it, it may have reduced down too much and intensified too much that it becomes salty. Yeah. And that's why, like, even with, like, if you did this with a, 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 a canned chicken stock, a no salt or very low sodium chicken stock will work well. But if you use a, a lot of those high sodium um, stocks, you're going to find yourself with a very salty finished product. Great. Okay. Okay. So, so good. The Madeira wine is such a, a bouquet. It is so, uh, you can tell, like, it, what is it? It's like a, um, it's a Portuguese wine, right, with um, with uh, reduced grapes. Uh, it's, it has such a, a distinct aroma, very floral, really rich. This is going to be such a beautiful four or five wine. So just as this, this is going to be probably another minute, and once that's done, we can swirl the water in, and we'll start finishing the dish. And the pasta is just about there. Great, Casey. It sounds amazing. It did make it. It's in the picture, Casey. <laughs> I wish I could see what you were doing. Oh, <laughs> well, maybe Leslie can flip it around. I'm not doing. We're doing okay. We can watch the playback. This will live on forever. The only thing is, are you going to light your dish on fire? Isn't that part of it? Like a fire? Yeah. Are you going to light it on fire? Oh, no. When I added the wine, if, if, if it heats up right away, you'll flame right up. So that's why I always pull it away from the fire so it's not... <laughs> If I'm doing it in front of people, I try for the show. But usually, I'm in the kitchen state of mind. I'm trying. I try to stay away from any any flames. So. I, I think I lost a couple eyebrows when we whipped this yes. up a couple of years ago. If I'm standing there going like this, I burn the hair off of my arms. <laughs> so you're doing the sniff test. So right now, I've reduced that wine out, and I've reduced the mushroom stock. So now, what I want to do is turn this. I want to turn this down a little bit. Okay. And I want to start swirling in my butter. So about two tablespoons of butter for this dish is perfect. Great. And you don't want, once you get that butter in there, you don't want to like let it really boil hard because what will happen is that butter will start to separate. You want to keep a really nice emulsion with the, with the stock and the butter. Do you like, yeah, you're agitating it to, to give it that emulsification texture? Typically, it's something like that. You want to just keep swirling that butter in. And right. you can see it begins to get smaller and smaller, and you'll see the color change in the sauce itself. Yeah. That's great. But if you let it go too far, the fat will separate from the liquid. Yeah, the, exactly. Once that emulsification breaks, it's really hard to bring it back together. And you can see, I don't know if you get a good view, but you can see that it's a nice, very emulsified looking sauce. And that's what you want, because that's going to give you the best coating and it's going to give you the best flavor composition. Yeah, the, that texture that's just going to hang with your pasta. Maggie, I'm going to taste this. Too. Great. Okay. What are, you don't have any secret ingredients over there, right? What are you doing? Are you salt? Are you tasting the seasoning? Truffle oil. Truffle oil is my go-to when I when I'm feeling when I'm feeling I need something to kind of really boost it. I'll hit it with a little bit of truffle oil, and it really makes a difference. So now my pasta is cooked. Mm. Yum! I want to get all that liquid out. Are you adding any of the pasta water to the sauce? I, I will wait till after, once I give it a good toss. Okay. I'll look at the consistency, and if it looks like it's a little bit dry, I'll hit it with just the touch of the water. Okay. But you also have to be careful because I'm also adding, um, when I'm doing this, I'm, I, I want to adjust my, wall, my water for my pasta is always very salty. You want it to, yeah. it literally needs to be like ocean water. Yeah. So now I'm going to add a little bit of uh, Parmesan cheese. Now my truffle oil. And you said white truffle oil. Always, Do you have a preference parsley? between the white and the black? What's your opinion? 
Um, for the truffles, I like, you know, for truffle oil, I always like to prefer the white truffle oil okay. because it's going to impart the best flavor into the oil. Great. Okay. And then they have, I so as you can see, it's a really nice emulsification. Yeah. Everything's really well coated and there's plenty of mushroom to pasta ratio. <laughs> I said ratio. I'm using big words. I like it. I know. I feel like this is really, we're putting it to the test to get my tasting bowl out. Oh yeah. What if you don't have truffle oil? If you, you can find truffle oil. If you don't want to use truffle oil or can't find truffle oil, you can always find truffle salt, which is a good addition. Right. And if not, you can really just stick with the flavors of the mushrooms, and they're still very, very satisfying. If you want a little more oomph to it, you can always add the fresh herbs. You can finish it with a little sprinkle of, like, fresh rosemary is always great with the mushrooms. Fresh thyme is fantastic. Great. Yeah, that thing, David, I agree. And the truffle oil, it's it's... You know, especially with things like Amazon and, and these, and you know, especially Amazon is really making everybody's life easier. Sure, was it, was it delivery? Oh, that looks so good, and you made that one. I love that you plated it up too, Paul. I'm sorry? I love that you plated it up two dishes. It's like we're, we're together in spirit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I wanted, we were sharing, so I figured we'd make it for two. And, and I know the, the skilled camera operator, Leslie, deserves a bite for sure. I, I love how the truffle is, uh, it, you know, for those extra nuances that will just, you know, like, bring all the work of the mushroom together in full circle. And you don't need much. Hmm. You, you really don't. For a dish like this, and what's great, like, if, you have, if you're a vegetarian and you want to do something like this, it's fantastic. Especially if you want, if you add like Swiss chard, collard greens that you that you can cook and add to it, a fantastic, you know, good bit of caramelized onion. So there's lots of different flavors that you can build on a dish like this. It's really what's great about it. It's building what you like and what you enjoy. Yeah. So I'm going to finish it with just a little bit more truffle oil. Oh. That's done. Ooh. That's a lot. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to take a bite. So, uh, the wine that we recommend, we're using an Argyle Pinot Noir. It's an Oregon style uh, Pinot Noir. Mm. It's fantastic with it. But again, you know, your preference of what you like is really what makes a difference. The Pinot Noir is going to stand up really nice with the, with the sweetness and also with the truffle. You know what? I feel inspired for anybody that's thinking about proposing while they're under quarantine right now. This is a dish that I think will guarantee a yes if you get down on one knee. This is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, right. yes. this, 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 will, this will cure a lot of woes. <laughs> it is sophisticated, it is elegant, it's rich, it just sticks to the ribs. This is fantastic, Chef. Mm. Thank you. And I love all the versatility and all the options. You can really tailor it and tweak it, but still keep that great core technique. Mm. Well, thank you very much. It's just, it's a great dish and it's a simple dish. It's, uh, it sounds complicated when you first talk about it, but when you when you really get down to its core, it's such a simple dish to execute. And because you can build it in layers, it's one of those things. If you have everything done in, in your refrigerator, like this fills your pantry, cooked mushrooms, mushroom stock, having good oils around, good pastas, and then the sky's the limit on what you can execute, and, and especially when you're in a time pinch. So if you cook, a, if I cook that whole bag of pasta, I would chill it down, and then I would take I would take as much as I need and still have pasta to do other things with. Yeah, yeah. that's fantastic. Emily's saying, absolutely yummy, Paul, and Casey, I can't wait to make this. It is I put a star by this one. This is so fantastic. And thank you for walking us through how you think like a chef. I love getting those pro tips, how to break down a really complex, delicious recipe. Chef, thank you so much, Paul, for all that you're doing locally and nationally for our community, small and large. And and you guys, we can get takeout from your restaurants, right? Tell us how we can eat your food right Absolutely. now. Supporting local restaurants is is so important right now especially because when you think about a lot of these restaurants they were coming off of their slow season 
and now and the, and their winter has been extended their, their long winter the long slow season's been extended and people's you know it's affected everyone but it's really hit restaurants in a very hard way and you know a lot of these restaurants are down 85 percent 90 percent and you just you can't sustain that and so and everybody will be looking forward to once we can get back and living lives and really kind of enjoying what's out there in this world and it's been very tough on all with for everyone there's not one person who hasn't been affected by this yeah, for sure um, well thank you for doing all that you're doing for our community and we'll be here for you when when we all get back to normal thank you for uh dividing your time tonight i know you had a pinochle tournament and we really appreciate the pantry Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Okay, Paul, we'll see you soon. Thanks so much, Kev. We'll oh my gosh. Well, now you guys have your homework and Friday night feast cut out for you. Send us your pictures. Hashtag the Chef's Pantry. Tag us at the Hub today. And oh, this is so fantastic. Chef Paul is one of our favorites. Thank you so much, guys. And we have some great things on the horizon. So if you're looking for more ways to connect, we have uh, Maria with mom to mom on Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. She's connecting with moms at all different life stages. It's a great place to commiserate, get best practices, learn a thing or two, and just feel like you're part of another community. Um, and then speaking of restaurants, this weekend is a really important weekend. We have One Night Live on on Sunday. I'll be hosting a two hour telethon from seven to nine across all virtual platforms with NBC and NECN. And the hope is to drive funds for the people in the restaurant industry that need our support most um, right now. So there have been so many people affected that uh, have been serving us our favorite food and drinks for years. And now it's our time to give to them. So please tune in virtually from seven to nine on Sunday. And I'll see you there, and I'll see you next Friday at 4 p.m. for another very delicious Chef's Pantry. Thank you, guys. We'll see you soon. Bon appetit.